Hello, welcome back to the Bugout Channel. Now join me on today's video where I have a, a night out in the hammock testing a load of equipment. I've got water purification, I've got bushcraft knives, I've got hammock systems, sleeping bags, even cooking pots. Join me and let's check it out. Let's open the cross this brook as there's a good place over there for hammer camping. But uh, we've had a bit of rain lately and uh, obviously a little bit today as well. Yeah, it's too deep to cross today. In a pinch I could do it, but uh, I don't want to get soaking wet. So I think I'll leave that for today. There is a bit of forestry, just a couple of minute walk up here, just on the side of the bank. I think I head there instead. But I uh, definitely want to come back here when the brook's a bit lower. As you can see, it's a beautiful spot over there for hammer camping. Obviously, the water's right here as well. I suppose the upside of going uphill a little bit gets me away from this noise of the water. Right, plan A, Scuppered. Plan B. Right, I found the spot. A bit better option here for, for hammer camping. It's a little bit overgrown. So um, I'm going to spend a bit of time now just clearing the, the deck around uh, where I'm going to put the hammock between these two trees. Nice little clearing here as well for a fire. So I think what I'll do, I'll put a tap up first because the rain is getting a little bit worse. It's on and off, but um, yeah, when it does come over, the shower's quite heavy. And what I'm going to do today is put a, a ridge line up so I can hang my little torch underneath the top. So I'll show you a couple of knots I use for my ridge line. Let's get to it. Right, so I've cleared an area now, below where the hammock's gonna go, and a bit of a pathway between the, the hammock and top and the, the fire, so uh, no trip hazards, hopefully. Right, so ridge line. So I'm gonna use my bank line, um, super strong, and uh, good in all weathers, just tar coated. So I'm gonna use a Siberian hitch knot. Now, I'm not a knot nerd, I've got two or three knots that I like using and, and um, I stick with them. So uh, don't worry if you can't tie all these fancy knots. There's, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of knots up there. And don't listen to people saying, oh, you should be using this knot, you should be using that knot. Just use a knot that you know and you trust. Right, I like using this knot. It's quick release and you can do it with gloves on. So, first step, hug the tree. I'm not a tree hugger, but no. Just pass a, your line around the tree. Right, so you've got your line there in your palm of your hand and the end, or the working end on this side of your hand, right? So put them both in your hand, in the palm one this side, one that side take the working end or the short end wrap it around your fingers like that so you've got three bits of string in your or line in your hand yeah, so that one's looped round hold them with your finger and thumb on this side and you twist your hand round, see that? Twist your hand round that, over, and then grab the working end, or the short end, yeah? And pull it through the loop. Pull it nice and tight. So you've got a knot, you should have a knot 
and a loop and that will just slip down on the tree that's not going anywhere right you'll break the string before you pull that knot apart but the good thing about it is quick release so you can take the working end or the short end just pull and away to go right so I'll show you again around the tree Put it in the palm of your hand, take the working end, loop it around your fingers, pinch it at the bottom, slide your hand on the back, over the top, grab the working end, through the loop, hold tight. Now for a bit of added uh, security, take a toggle stick, put that through your loop, pull that tight. There you know then, your loop's not going to come undone. You've got the toggle stick there, and if you did want to bug out pretty quick, just remove the toggle stick, pull the working end, and away to go. Easy peasy. Right, so we've done our Siberian hitch on that tree. Now we want to put some tension on the, on the line on this tree. The good thing about this knot as well, you can leave all your line coiled up, so I'm going to cut it off. This tree is a bit big for me to hug, so I'm going to have to walk around. I'm back. So you can already get tension on the line just by using the tree as a brake. See? And there's other knots out there, like I say, trucker's itch is usually a popular one. I think you've got to watch with trucker's itch. If you use an inferior paracord, because you're you're rubbing the two ends of the paracord together, you know, pulling on one, there is a tendency for it to break. Um, so just be careful of that. This one, we're not going to worry about it. All right? And like I say, you don't need to cut your line. So once you've got your line now around the tree, to get tension, just loop it over the top, like so, and then just pull in the opposite direction of the line. That tightens it up, tensions it up. Now I'm gonna go around the tree again. And to get a bit more tension, I'll do the same again. So under the line, over the top, and pulling the opposite direction. Yeah, that's like cheese wire now. Now we've got a long line, and you wanted to get more and more tension. Just repeat that process over and over again. Now to tie it off, you can just pinch that. With your finger and thumb, it won't go anywhere. Just make a loop of your thumb, over the top, through the loop, and pull. Easy as that. Again, if you want to tie it off again, just take the loop underneath the line, through the, through the loop and pull. That's it. That's not going anywhere. A nice taut ridge line. Plus the top up. Previously I had it in a diamond formation, so uh my jungle knots are on the wrong loops, but I put new jungle knots now on the, the halfway point, and I use these as well for tying down to the pegs. These are great, these jungle knots. Yeah, I've done videos on these before, so check them out. They're made from the strong bank line. Fix them to your tarp, your tent, anything really, and uh, yeah, it's quick release. So pass the knot of the working end through the loop between two other knots on the line. Put a toggle stick on like I have for added security, and uh, Bob's around the gym is tied off. And that's it. So uh, if you don't like tying knots, use these jungle knots instead.
Right, I got myself a couple of poles for the top. And like I said before, one of the reasons I'm coming out today is to try a bit of kit out, new stuff in the shop. Apart from the new kit to try out was the Beavercraft knives. All the way from Ukraine, they sent these knives out to me. I think it's three all together, just to give them my thoughts on it and to review the knives on the, on the YouTube and to test them out with the intention of selling them in the shop. So um, yeah, now I've got my poles, like I say, take the knife out. First impressions of these knives are really good. And um, yeah, solid. Not as thick as some of the knives out there. The Bushcraft knives, not as heavy, but for the price point, you know, sub 40, 50 pounds. Yeah, so far, they look and feel great. So um, proof will be in the cutting. The sheaves as well, yeah, nice danglers on them as well. So yeah, uh, first impressions are good. So, uh, but I haven't cut anything with them yet. So that's what we're gonna do now. And um, I will do a more in-depth uh, test on these knives in another video. I'll put them through the paces, but as for now, I'm just going to use them to uh, process a bit of wood, cut a few things, hopefully make a bit of a pot holder for the campfire, and enjoy my night in the woods. So that's the plan. Right, let's shape these poles for the top. So what I'm going to do is just put a point on the bottom, so I can stick it in the ground. That's that, and with the tops, I'm just going to round them off. Just so there's no sharp edges. Next to my top. I'm liking these knives. Because I got a loop on the top, I just cut a little bit of a notch. Just a straight cut first and then angle it up towards that. Just a bit at a time. So like that. This one fits my hand really nice. Probably a little bit large for bushcraft, but um, yeah, I'm starting to like this one. So there's a notch in that one. Point on the end, I'll just do the same the other. Well, there we have the top up. And uh, just in the nick of time, so it's just starting to rain again, or drizzle. First impression of the knife, doing them little notches and clean up the timber. Yeah, very good. So, uh, first test. Job's a good one. So I'll uh, just get my hammock up now. Get myself set up underneath the tarp. And then um, process some firewood. That's the next job. Right, the DD hammock straps or daisy chain straps. Easy piece to use. Again, do some tree hugging. I've got a loop on one end. Pass the rest of the strap through the loop. That's got you securely tied to the tree. These loops in, just put your carabiner, obviously attached to your hammock, on any one of these loops. So if the tree's a bit further away, not a problem. Bob Jonty Jim. Right, you're back down to the water's edge. Camp's all set up. I just need water now, don't I? Hopefully you can hear me over the water, but um, I brought a couple of things to filter water on this trip. First thing I'm gonna use is this Aqua Pure Traveler. Now this is a squeezy bottle with a filter in the lid. Just put rainwater, river water, whatever water in, squeeze it, and you've got clean water coming out. So let's fill it up.
Here we have it. Just like that. Good thing about these, I probably said before, when the filter has done its job, it stops working. So there's no risk of you drinking contaminated water. Another thing I bought today to try out is the Millbank bag. Now this is a canvas bag, used to be issued in the army years ago. I think they might still be, I don't know. You pull the water in, or river water, up to the top. Once you've filled it up, wait till it gets down to that line. And then the water comes out then, you can boil or treat. You can't drink the water straight out of the bag, because it will clean it, but it won't kill off any bacteria or whatever's in the water. So it'll be clean water, but it won't be safe to drink. So, like I say, all you gotta do is once you've gone through the milk bank bag, boil it five minutes, or treat it with a, a Puri tab. So, let's fill this up. because obviously the water started to fill out so I've got the time now it takes to get to that line before I get back to camp let's go right before I get my sleeping bag and uh, get in the hammock have a little bit of lunch have a drink so as you've seen before the Acropor Traveller. If you're very lucky, you can get the military ones. These are the 58 pound bottle, but um, these are the next best thing. So uh, yeah, the bottle's slightly different shape, but it'll still go in your, your pouch. And the uh, filters of water, really easy. Ah, just squeeze. Right, so what am I having for lunch? Today, I'll be mostly eating tomato pasta salad. I can eat this cold, which is good. My trusty uh, titanium spork, never leave home without it. I managed to take my coat off, now I'm under the, the shelter. So once I've had this, so I get my sleeping stuff out. Because it'll be dark before you know it. And I'll get some firewood ready for a fire. Look at that. Like I said before, today's video and the reason for overnighting is to test out some new stuff I've had in the shop. Sub I've had for a while. So I got the carbon steel cook set from Maddock Outdoors. They're a good seller. I have seasoned my own set, but I just haven't had a chance of using it yet, so I'll be using that for tonight's evening meal and for tomorrow's breakfast. What else have I got to try? Obviously the Power Traveller water filter. I've got the mill bank bag, I'll be using that. Um, obviously the knives. I know there's a pheasant bag here somewhere. Should have bought the can pot. So yeah, I've got the knives to, to try out. I got the new DD under quilt and I got the DD uh, sitting bag to try tonight. Plus the DD hammock straps, they're pretty easy enough. So yeah, quite a bit to try out on this um, video, trying to cram it all in. Right, lunch done. So um, I'm gonna get my sleeping system put in the hammock now before it gets too late. Um, I've got a bit of wood processing to do. I've got to try out um, the knives and all that. Bloody pheasant. So yeah, I've got a bit of kit to try out as well on it, so we'll film that. So yeah, let's get this in now. There's no real need to put an airbed in the hammock, but I'm gonna try it tonight with the DD Superlight airbed, just to see how that goes. Um, last time I was in the hammock, I was a bit enclosed, so I'm hoping this will spread it out a bit and I have a bit more room. So yeah, let's get that in there. I'm going to pump my earbed up in my little flex trail pump and light. I'll put a little carabiner on it so I can hook that on the old uh, ridge line and that'll be my light for tonight. Now you can see how much that's opened up the hammock. So it just keeps the shape 
and um, stops the, the sides collapsing in on yourself, you know, like a cocoon. So, uh, yeah, looks like it's working out all right. So let's get sitting back in. So the sitting bag is the, the Dura 2, multicam, obviously. Um, yeah, just got these in the shop now. Um, I haven't got them online yet. Um, I just put them in the shop just for now, just to see how they're getting on. But uh, yeah, I can put them online if uh, people wanted them. Yeah, they look the bee's knees. So uh, be nice to try this out, and uh, hopefully you'll save me carting about my bouncing bomb Arctic sleeping bag, which is great for cold weather, but um, not so good when the weather gets a bit warmer. So um, yeah, let's get this in. Now, what I like about this sleeping bag is obviously because it's designed for a hammock. The zip is up the middle, and there's a footwell at the bottom of the sleeping bag made of this tough material. So when you're going inside the hammock, uh, inside your sleeping bag, it's usually sitting on the edge with your feet on the ground and then lifting yourself in. So with this, obviously, you're not going to worry about tearing your sleeping bag or getting it dirty. Um, yeah, good idea, I think. So not much else you can say about that. So uh, other than just try it out. But uh, that's in there now. We've got under quilt plus our sleeping bag, so uh, I should be warm as toast. Got my light up. So uh, next job, firewood. So we've seen how good this knife was before, shaping them poles. But now I've cut some firewood. Let's we'll see how good it is battening. So this is my basher knife on the block. Yeah, it's done it. The hard work. There's a massive knot in the middle of that one. So split that down really good. There's a couple of real tough bits of wood. Do not say, but uh, we've done the job. This is a sub 50 pound knife, you know, 40 pounds or less. So, uh, yeah, it's not a heavy duty bushcraft knife. It probably weighs, you know, half the weight of some of the, the big boys, you know, the 120 pound knives you um, can get. But that's done that, no problem at all. And I, I, I give that some sort of wedding. Yeah. The edge is still good on it, and uh, just do a, a few feather sticks. For a knife which is under 50 quid, very impressed. I got a couple of others to try out. Like I say, we'll do a more in-depth um, review on these. Uh, when I've got time, I'll put them through their paces. So keep an eye out for that video. But so, so far, so good. So, pot stand. Right, I found a hazel bush and uh, got the bits I wanted. I managed to get all the bits I need out of one branch, which is good. So, 
need a, a piece of a Y on it. Two of them, one each side. So I've got one, two. Now if you're lucky and you can find several branches off, you can have multiple heights for your pot stand, but uh, one's enough. So that'll be one each side. All of those put a point on the end, stick them in the ground. Long length, sit between them two. Obviously I'll clean it all off now with a knife. Then the pot stand itself. Now if you can find a tree with an off shoot branch going one way and another going the other way, that's like a four leaf clover. Never gonna happen. So we just need two small bits like this with an off branch. Little notch in each one and I'll hold the two together. So I'll hook over the top once these are linked and your pan should hang from there. That's the plan anyway, so uh, let's give it a go and um, you can all but try, can't you? So let's do it. So just cut about halfway through. And then come about, I know, an inch from it and then just go in an angle up to the bottom of your cut. Just do little bits at a time. And also, I just use a knife to go on the notch, to go back in on itself. You form that sort of angle then. So try and find somewhere where they meet, that they're, they're close together. So this time, when I'm cutting through halfway, I've just cut back on an angle. Again, inch from there, and then just take bits off at an angle to the bottom of your cut. So you end up something like that. Just trim off the ends then, so they don't interfere with each other. There'll be a little bit of jiggery pokery just to get them to sit right, so they don't fall off. So that's what I'm going to do now. There we go. Let's see if that works. Right, it's getting a bit late in the day now, so I've got to think about evening meal, get this fire going, and then uh, cook a bit of tea. Everything else around camp is ready to go. So, uh, tea tonight. So it's gonna be my take on chicken chasseur, which is basically chicken, red wine, and mushrooms with onions. So um, I've got my chicken pre-diced, seasoned, the oil in there, and, uh, few herbs and spices so uh, that's just ready to go straight in the pan so all I really got to do is chop up an onion and some mushrooms I'll save some of my mushrooms for breakfast tomorrow and we use the new beaver craft knife so these are all scandy grind so it's not ideal for food prep but good enough so uh, let's give it a go
food's prepped. Fire's lit. Just wait for it to burn down a bit. Then we get tea on. Right, tea time. The oil, the oil for chicken. Red wine. Mushrooms and onions. That's it, just leave that simmer away now for a, well, half an hour or so. It's my take on chicken chasseur, chicken and red wine. Yeah, a bit of flambe action. So them pans from Maddock Outdoors, they're great. They're, um, that's the frying pan. But it fits a bale handle as well, you can see. Plus it's got the, the little handle as well for getting off the fire. If you buy the set, you get the Dutch oven as well. That was, that's with the lid. So um, I've got a set for myself. So that's the Dutch oven, the lid, the frying pan, the bale handle, and the small handle. You can have the frying pan with the lid, as you can see. You can have the Dutch oven with the frying pan on top. So it gives you like a, a bigger container. I will be doing some more videos in the future about the, the set. And the good thing about the carbon steel as well is half the weight of the cast iron. So just wait now until that cooks. There's a bit of an art to cooking with fire, again the right heat. So as you can see I've just moved the pot hangers down to one side, so away from the middle of the fire. Um, just so it'll simmer now for what, 20 minutes and they'll be ready to eat. If I wanted to heat it up again, just slide that across down to the middle and then Bob's your auntie Jim. Right, that's ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. Smells lovely. Just check the chicken's cooked. Oh. It's good. Oh, there's another thing. 
still got a bit of wine left. Oh, yucky da. And bon appetit. That pan works a treat. I'm looking forward to use these a lot more, especially in the summer. I'm going to sleep well tonight. That's bloody lovely. Fair play. I won't bother cleaning the pan. I'll leave that out till the morning. Cook my breakfast in that. Yeah, so if you are into outdoor cooking, you know, camping out, or even at home, these carbon steel pans are brilliant. They work on any uh, heat source, open flame, gas, um, in the oven, and you can cook just about anything in them. It's getting dark now. Fire is just smoldering over. I've just got my my gloves hanging up, drying. Quite pleased with my little pot stand contraption. But, uh, yeah, using that now to dry my gloves. The light is starting to fade. And in the woods, the light goes dark pretty quick. Well, the light disappears pretty quick. So I have a bit of a square up. Get my thermals on. And then watch this fire for a bit. I've got some home brew. What I made uh, over Christmas time. So I'm going to crack a couple of bottles of that open. And chill out. Catch in a bit. Right, that's me and my night attire. My thermal coat. Just uh, put on now before I go to sleep. Put my skins on, whatever the kids call them these days, thermals. Them on the tops and bottoms. That's where I'll sleep in. And then all my clothes here dry for the morning. So I'm gonna chill out now for a bit. I'm gonna watch something on the phone. Yeah, I've got a book to read as well, but I'm too lazy to read tonight. Oh, beer. Yeah, home brew. Not bad. I've no idea what strength it is. I forgot to measure it. But I had a few over Christmas and uh, we had a few guys staying up here camping. And, uh, Jim, if you're watching. And uh, yeah, he, he says it's real nice, so uh, I'll take his word for it. <sighs> yeah, it's time to chill out. Kick the boots off and chill. That's me in for the night. Got a full belly. The food and beer, but I'm pretty tired now, so uh, lights out, I think. So I'll catch you in the morning. No star. Morning, guys. Well, yeah, the birds are loud this morning. A bit of rain last night, but all in all. Good night's sleep. Very impressed with the bag. Kept me nice and warm. Right. Breakfast.
breakfast. It's here. Take a look at that. Oh yeah, that is one mighty meal. Sauce. Have a cup of tea in the flask. And breakfast. First time cooking it in this carbon steel frying pan and uh, yeah, works a treat. Even the eggs didn't stick, which is quite surprising. So bon appetit. Hmm. So eat this now and get packed up. So kit reviews. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Knives, yeah, very um, impressive knives. Let's say they're, I wouldn't say um, inexpensive, but they're affordable, aren't they? 50 pound knife for a good bushcraft knife. Yeah, yeah, no problems at all. Done all the jobs I asked of it. Yeah, the mill bank bag. Yeah, another quality item. You just gotta bear in mind, it's not gonna leave you safe drinking water, but it'll definitely clean it. Obviously, after going through the mill bank bag, you've gotta boil the water or treat it. DD. Under quilt and uh, sleeping bag. Yeah, I know it's not as cold as um, it was a few weeks ago, but it was a bit of frost on the ground um, the other day, and it was relatively mild um, last night. It didn't get down to freezing, but it was single figures, and um, yeah, I was warm as toast. And um, the good thing about the DT stuff as well, the under quilt, it fits that Highlander Crusader hammock, so um, you haven't got to get all DT stuff. The hammock straps makes life a lot easier. Especially with the carabiners, as you can see, uh, you know, within a couple of minutes you've got your hammock up, no problems. Or the Aqua Pure Traveller water filter bottle, bring a bit of kit, like I say. Again, there's more expensive ones out there, there's probably smaller ones, but the beauty of that is you squeeze and the water comes out. You aren't going to rely on gravity, and uh, once the filter's done its job, it'll stop working. And you're not going to worry about counting how many litres you, you've purified. So, yeah, fits in your bag real tidy, in your pouch. So another good product. The Maddox carbon steel pans, brilliant. And I say not too heavy. Half the weight of cast iron. And um, I cooked my breakfast in here, I cooked my tea in it, and nothing is stuck. But yeah, I was quite surprised. I thought my eggs might stick, but uh, nothing at all. Yeah. I'm gonna finish this now, have a cup of tea, and then pack up. I'll see you in a bit. Right, here we are guys, that's the end of the video, hope you enjoyed it, didn't quite go to plan with the river crossing, but I still had a good night out, tested all the equipment I wanted to, and uh, like I say, all in all, very good. Got to head back to the truck now, dry off a bit, it's got a bit damp, it's really drizzled, but uh, it's that fine rain that soaks you through, isn't it? Big shout out to my members on YouTube, and if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, it all helps the channel. If you want to see more of my uh, videos, Check that one out, that's a good one, and that one. And uh, like I say, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. All the best.